a ministry helps developmentally disabled share their faith. Congratulations to a new group of deacons and priests in their Diocese of Chicago. And the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe marks a milestone. That's all ahead on Sanctuary. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today here on Sanctuary. I'm Father Greg Sakowitz, Rector of Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago. A ministry is showcasing the welcoming spirit of the Archdiocese, known as SPREAD, the Ministry of Special Religious Development, provides families with developmentally disabled children a chance to participate in liturgical life. We're at the Spread Center at 30th and Low in Bridgeport. And this is where we train all the people that come for our resources. Spread is a faith formation ministry for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It stands for Special Religious Development. It is a lifelong formation uh, ministry. Uh, so we minister to both children and adults of all function levels with intellectual and developmental disabilities. They're really looking to help their son or daughter uh, grow in their relationship with God. I had one parent one tell me that they, they felt that spread helped enhance their own faith because they were able to share their faith with their two sons who are both severely disabled. She never thought that their sons would ever be able to participate in the church or that she'd ever be able to share her faith with her sons. Spread has actually brought families back to the church. Once a, a person, especially with significant disabilities, arrives in a family, the family oftentimes breaks apart or falls in on itself. They, they, be, they usually become very isolated. And so they try to go into parishes, and if they don't receive a, a warm welcome, they withdraw. So once they hit somebody like our spread volunteers and ourselves, it's like day and night. And so once they open up, actually they become the best members of the parish because somebody has taken time with their family member, they will devote themselves entirely in the parish. For us, for my husband and I, spread re-gifted us our faith. We were many times challenged with feeling that maybe our, our son was going to be frowned upon for his you know, uniqueness of who he is. I Googled Spread Chicago, came up to their website, sent an email, and Sister Mary Therese Harrington actually was the one who responded to me. And then they invited us to come here to one of the masses, and it was God sent. We, we came to the mass, it was just beautiful. I was in tears the whole time. It was a, a clear, life-changing moment that when you put your entire being into something that you want for your loved one so bad. You don't give up, you continue to put forth all, all the effort, but most importantly, prayer and faith. It's unbelievable how God presents you with this enormous gift of love and acceptance. I can't even begin to sh tell people how many days I desired to see my son, you know, celebrate his first Holy Communion. Uh, which he did. That Mass, I sat there and I kept telling myself, Lord, this is what heaven feels like because it was a priceless moment. So for me, the Spread community, all of the people that are part of the Spread ministry, they continuously gift us the reminder of love, faith, and acceptance. For so long, our friends with intellectual disabilities pretty much uh, have been rejected, ignored, 
uh, they're hidden. Even Pope Francis has said in Fratelli Tutti that people with disabilities tend to be hidden within our parish communities. But they are some of the most welcoming people, um, the most loving people. And from them, I have grown in my own faith because I have seen God's love in them and how they relate to me. And how even though they've been excluded for so long, they always make me feel that I belong within that group. You can learn more about SPREAD by going to their website. The address is spread-chicago.org. Chicago's nearly 200 Catholic schools educate some 65,000 students. It's an education that's both spiritual and academic and one that alumni hold dear. Listen now as some former students reflect on their time in Catholic school. When I was a kid, I, I knew that going to Catholic school was special. I don't think it was until I was an adult that I really had a sense of what a values-based education meant. I could see the difference in the Catholic school, not just education, but also the work ethic that's instilled in Catholic school students as I went out into college and law school. And I was a little bit better prepared because of my Catholic school education. We really, really focused on like accepting everyone and loving everyone and making sure that you helped people when they needed it. It was a really, really good experience. We are at St. Athanasius School in Evanston. This is where I went to first uh, through eighth grade. My picture is up in the hallway, class of 1993. I'm looking very grim in a, in a tie with my, and I still have the same haircut, actually. I'm Sonia Antelek. I started Catholic school when I was six years old in kindergarten at St. Stephen. Wearing a plaid skirt that was much too long for me. First grade was when I had to start wearing a uniform and my choices were either a skirt or a jumper. Um, I was more of a jumper gal. Uh, my name is Mike Lowe. I am a general assignment reporter and fill-in anchor at WGN-TV in Chicago. I uh, grew up here in Evanston, went to St. A's for grade school, then went to Loyola Academy. Looking back, the difference to me was that the teachers here gave such caring educations. They were more than just teachers. They would stay behind. They were at the events on the weekends. They would come out to the football games and the basketball games, and I just felt like all the teachers cared so much, and I think that really, if you had to boil it down to one thing, is what separates Catholic education. I think it gave me a sense of right and wrong, and a sense of values, and really a sense that what I'm out to do is to serve other people. I went to St. Barbara, where I graduated eighth grade from. Then I went on to St. Ignatius College Prep for high school. DePaul University for my undergrad, and Loyola for law school. A lot of Catholic school education. I started right out of law school at the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. I wanted to seek justice for everyone. I went from there to the state of Illinois and was a chief administrative law judge, and then I started working for startups that are mission-driven. I knew I wanted to be an attorney who helped people, who had a mission, who worked for a mission, and worked for others. Paulina Thomas. I actually spent over two-thirds of my life in Catholic school. I started at Pope John the 23rd in preschool when I was three. Honestly, I absolutely love Pope John. I really don't think that I would be the same person had I not gone to Pope John the 23rd. Going to Catholic school let me know that being kind is always free and it's easy. My job title is Solution Engineer, which probably means nothing to most people. I went to Vanderbilt University in Nashville and I majored in Engineering Science and Engineering Management. In my current job today, people say that I'm like a good mentor figure and that I'm accepting and stuff and I really think that um, Catholic school helped me get there. People would always say, you're still friends with your 
the people you knew from grade school and high school? And I say, yeah, they're like my best friends. Like even when we were five years old, we really had that strong sense of community. My time in Catholic schools prepared me better for the challenges that I would face at the university level, in the professional level, and beyond. The idea of being open to growth, the idea of having a spiritual identity, the idea of making sure that every decision you make is made with integrity. Loving one another is, is, a, is a really good place to start and it's usually a good place to end. To learn more about a Catholic school near you, visit our website, schools.artchicago.org. This year, the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe celebrates the 10th anniversary of its founding as a shrine, the Archdiocese of Chicago. To mark that milestone, a special mass was held in June. Hundreds gathered on the shrine's plaza. The outdoor mass was celebrated by Cardinal Blaise Supich and the Archbishop of Mexico City, Cardinal Carlos Aguiar. Here's a look back at the day's events. Today, with the blessing of these cardinals, we would like to confirm that all pilgrims are able to fulfill their promises here at the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Bendice, Señor, a todos los que aquí te imploren, a todos los que traigan sus súplicas, pero también... Early spring was a busy time as the Archdiocese of Chicago ordained a new class of both deacons and priests. The joy ceremonies were held over two weekends at Holy Name Cathedral. We thought you would enjoy meeting a few of them. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Saint Dominic, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. It's a lot of emotions, it's, it's joy, it's, it, I, I can't describe peace. When I was prostrating and got up and there was just a sense of peace and then a sense of joy, a sense of gratitude to, towards God. Uh, it's truly surreal, um, but it is just an incredible outpouring of the grace of God. And so I hope I can live into it every single day. So it's, it's an incredible joy to receive his love in such a profound way. And I hope that in some way I can share that in a profound way with the people that I meet. parish experience that I've had has just exposed me to so much of what priests do and how they serve their parishioners. God is always wanting to fulfill us and, and the way that I'm fulfilled is by giving myself. So before, even before I was, came to seminary, I was a teacher and I wanted to give back to the community. 
but there was something missing there. Out of the deep desires of my heart, the desires for being known and loved and desiring to give myself over to a great cause, um, that was the, in the, my initial desire. And I've met so many young people about my age and younger who have that. And when I finally encountered God and began to discern, I said, this is what fulfills me the most. Our Catholic school choirs help their school communities celebrate their faith in song. Today we are pleased to share their glorious sounds with you. Here now is the Mother Macaulay Concert Choir. Will the There is a beacon of hope on Chicago's west side. The Bay Chicago gives student athletes the support and resources that they need, steering them away from violence and crime they may confront near their doorsteps. I had the pleasure of sitting down with the group's organizers in a recent edition of our Catholic Chicago video stream. Base Chicago reimagines pathways to success for urban youth by combining sports and academic opportunities with a distinctive methodology rooted in excellence, belief, and love. How did it get its name? And for many of our listeners, what is Base Chicago? Eric? Yeah, um, <clears throat> how we came to Chicago is the uh, Base Chicago was actually created in Boston. And when Theo Epstein came to take over the Chicago Cubs, he, being part of the base in Boston, wanted to do something for Chicago youth. And that something was he and his twin brother wanted to create a base in Chicago. And we chose to place it in West Garfield Park because the difficulties that community was having. And we kind of put ourselves out as a sports-based program because that attracts young people to the program but we have fully moved to a position of being more academic. And this is what I can say, Father. We market ourselves as a sports-based program. We have developed no Division I athletes, and we have, de we have developed no professional athletes. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> but we have developed 30 kids that are in college. Many of them have graduated. Many of them will go on to be great citizens of this and city. And that's the success. So I think the biggest thing for me is they're, they're creating hope in uh, the West Garfield Park community for certain kids. Um, one thing that they had mentioned to me early on was, you know, Rich, there's a lot of kids, young kids in this community that have never been outside of the community. They've, some mm -hmm. have never seen the lakefront. And even when he worked in Cabrini Green as a Chicago police officer, he told me that some of the kids had never been to the lakefront, and I'm, I could not believe that. And so that's one of the things we've been doing as the base is taking the kids. I, you just showed a picture of us. We had a, a program with Sea Scouts where we took the kids out sailing out on Lake Michigan. Wow. And to see the smiles on some of these kids' faces was pretty unbelievable because they've never done that before. They've been on a boat. We just came back from L.A. with a large group of children for something that we'll go into later. But... We did a, a tour of UCLA's campus. That was fantastic. We had professors speak to us there. Um, it was just neat seeing the, the, the hope and the experience. So I think the biggest thing for me is 
they're they're creating hope in uh, the West Garfield Park community for certain kids. Um, one thing that they had mentioned to me early on was, you know, Rich, there's a lot of kids, young kids in this community that have never been outside of the community. They've some have never seen the lakefront. And even when he worked in Cabrini Green as a Chicago police officer, he told me that some of the kids had never been to the lakefront. And I'm, I could not believe that. And so that's one of the things we've been doing as the base is taking the kids. You just showed a picture of us. We had a, a program with Sea Scouts where we took the kids out sailing out on Lake Michigan. Wow. And to see the smiles on some of these kids' faces was pretty unbelievable because they've never done that before. They've been on a boat. We just came back from L.A. with a large group of children for something that we'll go into later. But we did a, a tour of UCLA's campus. That was fantastic. We had professors speak to us there. Um, it was just neat seeing the, the, the hope and the expressions on these kids' faces. And they've come up to me. I had a young kid at one time, it was around Christmas time, come chasing after me. And he's tugging on my shirt saying, sir, thank you for helping us. Wow. And it was this little kid wow. must have been seven years old. And he said, thank you. And so that hit me hard. And then another story real quick. On the wall, there was a collage. It was around Christmas time. It was an art collage. In the center of it, it said, what do you want for Christmas? And all these kids in crayon and writing, little kids wrote on it, a phone, a car, a video game, what you'd expect. But sprinkled throughout it was, I want to be alive next year. Mm -hmm. There were multiple spots on this board. It wasn't just one wow. thing. I should have taken a picture of that because that hit me hard. And that's when I said, I went home. And I went, okay, to all my friends in the Catholic community. This is one reason why we're here. Stepped up. I said, that was a network I needed to go to to help, you know, introduce them to the base and the mission. Rich and Eric, this has been a phenomenal program. Thank you God so bless much. your ministry. Amen. And thank, thank you all. Unfortunately, as we see in too many headlines, gun violence is causing grief and death in many of our neighborhoods. In response, there's the Diocese of Chicago and the Waukegan Police Department join forces in an effort to reduce gun violence one weapon at a time. Over 100 firearms were taken off the street in a gun buyback event in Lake County. They are guns off the street. They are guns that children can't um, hurt themselves with. They're, they're guns that cannot be stolen or committed in crimes. So every gun that we get off the street, whether it's through traffic stops, whether it's through these types of programs, they're guns that make our, our community safer. Time now to listen in to another of our talented choirs. Here are the students from the St. Ignatius College Prep Bella Voce Choir and Chamber Orchestra.
Catholic Charities is giving back to those who gave selflessly of themselves in service to our country. St. Leo's Campus for Veterans offers social services, medical assistance, and housing to those who served. On a recent episode of our stream, The Voice of Charity, the voice host Phil Zapeta and Katie Breedeman had a chance Katie. to speak with the program's director. Um, the St. Leo campus opened in January of 2007, um, and it was the result of a five-year planning partnership with the Veterans Administration, HUD, and Catholic Charities as part of the Homeless Veterans Comprehensive Assistance Act of 2001. And it was to be the first of five pilot locations throughout the United States to provide housing, medical, and social services to veteran, U.S. military veterans, all in one location. They wanted to have it where it was like a one-stop shop. Unfortunately, or um, St. Leo campus remains the first and only completed project of its kind in the nation. St. Leo is located at 7750 South Emerald um, Avenue in the, in, we're in the Auburn Gresham neighborhood, Inglewood Auburn Gresham, and it's the site of the former St. Leo parish. And so how long have you lived at the St. Leo's campus, Daniel? I've been here three years, man. Oh my gosh. And three good years. <laughs> I'm talking about, I love it here. Can you explain for us a little bit about the activities, you know, that are the most enjoyable for you? You know, everything, you know, the, 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 the people here are so nice to you. It's like your family, you know, my caseworker is, man, he's something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He helps me with everything. When I have a problem, he, he tells, he talks to me. Everybody, Daniel, it's so great that 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 sense of community is really, you know, prevails and that you have that. Talk about the friendships that you've made. Everybody get along, you know, because we are here for a reason, because we were homeless, you know. So we all look out for each other. You can view the entire episode, plus many programs in the Voice of Charity archive by logging on to our YouTube channel, Catholic Chicago. That's where you'll find links to all our programs and Catholic content, also available in podcast form wherever you get your podcasts. And that brings another edition of Sanctuary to a close. We want to thank you very much for joining us. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz. Lord bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand.